I don't want to be down on my knees and say, will you please be my CEO? Yeah. I want somebody to say, can I please be the CEO? Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Because otherwise, you just start at such a big minus, and you you know, whenever things get tough, you have to convince that person to be enthusiastic yet another exactly. day, right? Yeah, exactly. 100% agree. Yeah. And do you do you find that a hundred percent of the things that you work on become companies, or is it more like you're enthusiastic about what you do? You go and work on things. And then those things sometimes in turn turn into businesses and sometimes those things doesn't, don't turn into anything. A lot of what I'm thinking about doesn't become anything, but I have like an yeah. in inventory. Yeah. Some of it I've listed down on my computer. Anyone who knows Lars, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> I have an inventory of ideas and also, for instance, of domain names. Yeah. And some, <laughs> sometimes come from the domain name I get this sometimes. reminder list from the domain <laughs> registration companies. <laughs> I look at all these domain names and they reflect uh, business ideas that I've had. And, and uh, I have cases where it takes 10 or 15 years from the time where I register a domain until actually it becomes a business. And what happens uh, very often is I get an idea, I register a, a, a good domain for it, I start discussing it with people, telling people about it. And if nobody says, yay, that's cool, can I be your partner, can I invest, I want to work for this. If I don't get any of that feedback from anybody, then I tend to drop it. But also you and I have that one thing together, which is we are dependent because both of us are not the CEOs of the companies that we have. Mm. We are dependent on finding other people who are enthusiastic yeah. about yeah. the idea versus going in and being the CEO yourself. I, I don't want to be down on my knees and say, will you please be my CEO? Yeah. I want somebody to say, can I please be the CEO? I find this Although, super yeah, exciting. Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me be part of this. Uh, otherwise, I'm not going to do it. No. Because otherwise, you just start at such a big minus, and you you know whenever things get tough, you have to convince that person to be enthusiastic yet another exactly. day, right? Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent agree. Yeah. It's even better sometimes. I found Morten Lund, who you know was part of Skype and all those things. He he plans the seat with someone. He'll just tell them about it. And he's very happy. He he like you. He says he won't push. Mm. He'll just wait until that person comes back and says, "Wow, Morten, what you talked about was so cool. I want to be part of this." Uh, so exactly the same mm. as you're saying. If yeah. you only got one idea. <laughs> you know your life is <laughs> your life is passing and nobody does anything about your one idea then you would then you would push it but having an inventory is good and i have i have uh, an idea for making uh, a tracking system for investments of passion and i'll outline so if you want to be part of this contact bars don't you also find that the more ideas and the more you socialize and the more you read and everything, the more ideas you get. It, it sort of yeah, becomes a exactly. self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. I remember initially when we started, we were like, we were like looking at TechCrunch, which is the tech, uh, American tech magazine. We were like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. That sounds like it. But the more you start to think about ideas, the more you just start to actually merge ideas as well. Yeah, yeah. And actually find this one works well with this and this, and therefore we have a new idea. Yeah, exactly. The more you know, the more you can find. Yeah. Because ideas are, are in combinations, new combinations yes. of what exists. I started thinking about, can I think of any business idea which is not simply a recombination of what exists? Yeah. I can't. I, yeah. It's So far, I've not been able to think of anything like that. And, but that means... It's what yeah. they call innovation on the shoulder of giants, right? Uh, and, and that means exactly as you said, yeah. that the more you know, you, the more you find. And there are different approaches to it. One, of course, is to read a lot. And then you and I like to read, yeah. uh, but that's us, other people don't. But when you talk with people who also are interested in ideas, stuff come up. I mean, it comes things up, you know, up. weird things. And I think the diff one difference between reading and talking is that if I talk with somebody who's interesting about a subject, then that person will go through in that person's mind everything that's in there and then pick what's relevant for that conversation. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, conversation can be more efficient than, yeah. than reading. Because uh, when you read the, the article, the book doesn't know what you're what's, looking for, what you're looking for yeah, what's yeah, exactly. your, on your mind, but uh, the person does. And so th that's the reason you should not only read. Yeah. What, I've, what I do find from reading though is that it can, 
you know, can be very condensed information about a subject. And plus that, that person will talk about what you're talking about, but he will also feed off the information very often, right? So yeah. he will, if you, if you put the level here, he may say, well, I have an idea on top of that. Exactly. And then you actually uh, sort of ping pong, you get to a better solution. Mm -hmm. And then what I find is that if you, have, you have a conversation for a, a period of time, could be, let's say an hour and a half. Yeah. For instance, yesterday I had uh, exactly that. I had an, a, a conversation with three people for an hour and a half about some ideas. Mm -hmm and after after that time i need to stop i need to sleep on it and then i will I wake up the next morning and then suddenly it's clear to me that of all that of all the stuff we talked about one thing was the best there was one idea that was far better than the other ones yeah then i write to them and say you know now i think it's like this and that and then they write back yeah i think so too but and then yeah. they add a little bit and so it needs to take the time that it takes yeah it's not like if if you need 10 hours of thinking that you can do the 10 hours in in one in one go in one go no you need to 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 break it up yeah but that that can be really efficient the other thing that i i find is sufficient at least for me is to work on many different things at the same mm -hmm. time i think it's different for different people mm -hmm. i think you and i like that a lot i think we get also information from it. Mm -hmm. I remember we had this, the first investor that actually ever invested in Nova uh, <laughs> was a guy, he was very high up in the banks. He had led sales and trading for globally for one of the big banks. And he always said, Mass, you know, there's a good thing about and bad thing about my job. The bad thing is, you know, all these people come with all these creative products, financial products, and they have to understand all of them and add value to them, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they expect. And, you know, they come with all these crazy products. I just have to understand it immediately. But he says, you know, the good thing is all these people come with all these crazy products and they hear about them all the time and have to understand them immediately, right? So the fact that he listens to all these conversations makes him better at the next one. Uh. In a similar fashion, you know, the more you think about ideas, the more you come up with ideas, the more you're creative about it, the more things you work on, the more you add value to each idea, mm. I find. So uh, there's a technique for thinking. It's actually, in this, in this case, it's actually for writing, but it's called the Hemingway Bridge. Mm -hmm. So Hemingway, when he wrote, he would write one chapter of, of a book. But then when the chapter was finished, instead of just saying, calling, call it a day, and uh, I think he would yes. open a bottle of whiskey, being him. Yeah. But he, what he did was he immediately started on the, the next chapter because yeah. he was in the flow. And then he wrote maybe half a page or a page of the next chapter. Yeah. That made it so much easier for him to get started on the next day. So the way I like to work is that I have a lot of these Hemingway bridges going on yep. that I work with 10 or 15 different things. And with, we, with each of them, I work until I'm kind of stuck, yep. that, that it's not productive anymore. And, and then I leave that and work on something else. But what, what I leave is actually like I have written half a page or a page of a yep. chapter in something. So it's very easy for me to pick up when I'm in the mood for that again, or when something But I think it's important new to know that come. you are at a point in your life where you can do that. Whereas when you started out, of you course. worked on one thing. Uh, I mean, that was mm. all you were thinking about 24 seven, right? So uh, it also depends, I guess, on where you are in your career, yeah. because you need people, as I do, I think, you need people in your companies who are just thinking about that and they're thinking about nothing else. They're thinking about being the best this or that business in the world. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So it's also, I, I think it's always so important to remember that we play different roles in mm. the teams. And so if you like Lars and I have a lot of ideas and sort of very enthusiastic and you know, are like to be very creative, love to have a lot of things going on, you've got to build a setup for that, which I think both of us have been quite, you know, fortunate mm. in building. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this clip. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment below so I can follow your journey. I can be part of your life and hopefully you'll be part of mine as well. And if you haven't already done it, click subscribe below and uh, we can be part of this entrepreneurial and leadership and career adventure together.